Hey guys, Melissa here again. I'm really just like shooting these videos out. So much to say, so much to help to give. I'm just tossing them out. So here I am, I went shopping today and this was at the dollar store. I'll point it over here. But I needed some Fabiosi or something for mopping and cleaning. This stuff makes your home smell awesome. Spray. Um, this stuff and I am going to try this stuff because there's some of that and I cannot stand mildew when I was a kid um, growing up like I sh shared before my father had to um, pretty much take care of the home with like building it from scratch here he was you know doing construction all day and on the weekends I mean, had to, you know, fix up the home usually. And my father was doing that when we first moved into the home. And he was a hunter. I mean, I don't know if he still is, but I haven't seen him in a little while. But I definitely, you know, remember birthdays with, I'm just going to sit down and talk here a minute, with, um, you know, all the relatives over. I remember my favorite uncle would come on over first day of deer hunting, which was my birthday back then. And all the guys would just, you know, be really excited to start their adventures to go deer hunting. And there was my great uncle, there were family friends. So that was big in our life. And also um, the shoots. My father was killer number one at the bow and arrow shoots. Um, big, big, well-known for shooting. Um, well, he was somebody most people could not beat with a bow and arrow. We would go all over the place. We would go um, to Peterborough, Keene, Chester Rod and Gun Club, uh, you know, just all over the place. We had cousins we were really close to who also shot and, you know, I was known as Dickie's girl when I was a little girl. That's who I was. Um, he was the champ. No one could beat him. Uh, a lot of times people also did not like that. I remember one time sitting with my mom and my dad had won again. And he usually, you know, scored about 300, which was a perfect score with the bow and arrow. You know, getting a 10, 30 targets, getting a 10 at each target, you're gonna score a 300. So here he was again, scoring like a perfect score. And um, I remember some people booing and I was a kid and I didn't understand what was going on. And, you know, my mom had said some people don't like it. They don't like it when, you know, the same person keeps on winning. And it's true. When you're at the top, a lot of people try to bring you down. They don't like it. And, you know, there's that old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. And, um, yeah, so he won a lot. And he, you know, my brother also is an excellent sportsman. Um very good with the bow and arrow, both awesome with guns. And um, that's kind of the background I had with the men in my life. Um, so, I mean, I'll probably talk about this more in the future, but when, you know, you have, a, you know, role models in your life and men in your life that, um, you know, I, I think what happened later on was my father just did not know how to have a girl and the relationship just turned very broken and it's heartbreaking because right now my mother is you know in the hospital and she, um it's pretty serious and i've been told uh basically i'm not wanted i'm not you know i didn't do exactly what they wanted when they wanted how they wanted and they don't want me in their life again this was after years of you know having my father disown me he was the type of guy that you did what he said or hit the highway. So that that was something that got turned and twisted into something that, you know, again, somehow that was my fault that he disowned me. Um, I went over, had the door slammed in my face, tried to work things out. And, you know, I want to talk about the, the father-daughter relationship down the road and what that can do to a girl or a woman when she has a father who's very rejecting. I know that he had certain things in his past 
Um, I had an aunt who had way back gotten married, um, but before she did, she had a child out of wedlock, and this was probably one of the reasons why my father, you know, shamed me, and basically, you know, the abortion was a decision he made for me, which is just something that he was definitely wrong about, and, you know, there has never been an apology, there's never been a I think once there was, you know, when he wanted to be a grandfather, there was a, you know, sorry I wasn't as good as a dad as I could have been, but no responsibility taken for specific things. And that abortion is a big one. So part of my channel is um, talking about abortion and how it harms women. But that goes into the broken father-daughter relationship. It goes into, um, you know, mother-daughter difficulties. The, the abortion issue is not just here, have an abortion and um, good luck, you're all set, don't worry about it, pretend it didn't happen, and now you can just go, you know, be a mom and pretend it didn't happen. There is a lot that happens uh, with the intricacies and the details of an abortion, and that's something that our society isn't seeing yet. I just um, spoke at a couple hearings this week. I actually, let me see, emailed one day, Tuesday, about abortions being banned at 24 weeks. Um, there was another one where sidewalking would be, the buffer zone would stay in place, which it shouldn't. I mean, our free speech should be, you know, we should be able to have free speech anywhere, any business, car dealership, if you go there and you wanna say something, you can. If you get a lemon, you can protest over there. Um, you know, this is the only place that wants extra protections. Let's see, and then the next day there were a couple other bills. Um, one was what is medically appropriate for a woman. Uh, medical care that is appropriate for the um, baby who survives an abortion too. So um, I had Dr. Young in the meeting, in the Zoom meeting, talk about how much he's done to help people at OBGYN in Concord. And OBGYN was the place that um, did not give me appropriate medical care. They pretty much took me in, threw me upstairs, dilated me, let me leave, no medication at all. Um, I was taken to a restaurant and then dilated in the car um, and was in labor, actually in, the, in a car. And then finally going back and not even understanding what an abortion was and seeing the blood in a machine and a nurse holding my hand saying it's going to be okay. And that was it. And then my boyfriend's mother, who his parents also made decisions. Um, he was the chief of, you know, the chief fire department um, deputy or whatever it was in a local town. So he definitely wanted to protect his son. And this was my first boyfriend who I had dated for about a year. So there was a, you know, there was a relationship there. And um, he's the one who, you know, used a condom knowing that it looked old, told me it was okay, and it broke. So there was a lot of different stuff going on there, but definitely a rushed decision. And then taken home, walked part way home so nobody would know when the school bus came that... Um, I had missed school, but yet the school bus came early. So there was a mistake there on early release day. And um, so the shame and condemnation before, after, you know, keeping our mouths shut, don't tell anybody, was the orders that um, my brother had from my father to shut his mouth, don't tell anyone, and then me to go to gym the next day with no with never talking about it again until I had my firstborn son, which I talk about in a video just before this, how my life as a Christian started and how, um, you know, the truth coming out about that really affected me and I got saved and, you know, I took many classes with my kids, you know, being a mother and I have no regrets about, you know, all the classes I took. So. Yeah, so back to, um, how did I get on the subject? Oh, just that father-daughter relationship. I'm going to be talking about rejection in that relationship, um, feeling abandoned, uh, negativity, a daughter who can never do anything right, 
usually what happens with that is your kid, if they can never do anything good enough to make you happy, the kid usually gives up and they don't care anymore. They'll just stop trying. So I was definitely an A, B student in school. And when I did get that B, it was, how come you don't have an A? Why is it a B? So girls can get very driven and I will be talking about that and I will be talking about the toxic relationships in um, families and, you know, just trying to help girls um, with those difficult relationships and being able to um, handle those better in life. So just back to what I was saying here with the cleaning, um, I went into just, you know, how I wanted to try some of this stuff and also, these bags here I keep these bags I keep like my shopping bags and I stick them under the cupboards and that way if I need a bag to um, you know another bag for the trash or if I need to put something in a bag I have it so yeah yeah so here's some tips for me on this and um, I raised my family very frugally and definitely with all the resources um, that I could and I will be talking about that too community resources and where we did have help with family and where we didn't Okay, so thanks for joining me guys